Hallelujah to Jesus. We give God a praise. Let God be glorified forever in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory Abba Father. This is God's own channel with Evangelist Sarah. You're welcome. The Lord bless you. The Lord bless every member of this household. It is well with you, Jesus. Love you. And I love you. Please find me like this video. Share, subscribe. Tell somebody about this ministry. God bless you as you do that in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Glory Abba Father. This is for somebody. This is specifically for you, child of God. That you are so tired, you know. <clears throat> in your body and in your mind, you feel tired. Like when you even hear about what God is doing, you don't you don't even know if it is true or not, you know. Uh, the world that we are living has pushed you to that to that level. The situation has pushed you to the wall. You know, has pushed you to the wall where you are like whatever, you know where you are like, whatever. But one thing I'm grateful to God for when it comes to your life is that you still keep serving God. You understand? You keep, you keep, you, you just still keep on serving God. Like you want to see God. You know, there are so many people who serve God because of what they want. And why there are others who serve God because of whom God is, you know, when you serve God for whom God is, you no longer get too worried about what you have not received from God that you are praying for. You just serve God because you know one day you will meet with this God. You will meet with him. All their suffering, all their sorrow will be there, will be, will be gone. God will remove all their sorrow, their pain. You just want that day to come and you are holding on to the Lord. You know, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, it says, I've set before you an open door. And he said, this door that he set before you, he said, no man can shut the door. The reason why he set the door before you said because you have a little strength, but you did not give up on him. Hallelujah. You did not give up on God. He said because of that, he will reward you. That is reward. That is reward. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Child of God, God is going to end that thing that is making you to feel like, okay, I'm not even sure anymore. I don't know anymore. You know, and even when people tell you, Take it to the Lord for confirmation. You're like, I don't know anymore. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. This has been going on for decades. This has been going on for this. This has been going on for that. You know, one thing about God, a thousand years in our eyes is like a twink, it's just like a seconds in the in the eyes of God. Hallelujah. It does not matter if, if it has been decades. When God puts an end to that suffering, God can also give you multiple decades for you to live. A, a, a suffer-free life, you understand, a stress-free life, glory to Jesus, I know that your body, your heart, your mind can get tired because you are human, but I'm here to tell you that God is making a way for you, even where there seems to be no way, how long has it been, I know many people will say, Evangelisera, it has been so long, I understand, yes, it has been so long, it has been so long, but that so long is no longer to be so long anymore because God is stepping into your case. Hallelujah. Because God is stepping. I am prophesying for you now. I am prophesying upon your life right now as I speak that now God is putting an end. You know, if you believe God is putting an end to that years of decades, you know, um, uh, um, years of suffering for decades. I'm sorry if for my words, you know. I'm trying to make sure I don't miss everything up. I'm a human being. I can make mistakes. Forgive me if I say anything wrong. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. <clears throat> Glory up, our Father. There is an end to everything. When Jabez was passing through <coughs> failure, rising, failure, rising, the Bible recorded that at a certain time, things would go wrong for Jabez. Though Jabez was honorable among his brethren, the Bible says he was honorable but yet he was passing through some pain for years because of the name that he was called. You know, situation can become a name that we have been called. But that situation that has become a name that you have been called, God had me to tell you through his word, it can end. And he's ending it for you. Why? Because you have a little strength. You did not quit on God. You did not quit on God. You didn't tell God, no, God, I am done with you. 
God, I don't want to serve you anymore because I waited on this thing. You did not give it to me. God, I have fasted. I prayed. Why are you treating me like this? You know, many of us, we feel frustrated at God because when you put your mind only on what you want to get from God, there will be disappointment. When we put our mind only, oh, I want to get this from God. I want to get this from God. But we, we are not cautious about life. We are not cautious about our salvation. We are not even cautious about our calling. Or we are not even determined on how we will see God. There will be disappointment. So that is why you see many Christians are being disappointed. The Bible says the race is not to the swift. It's not to those ones that have the strength. And you know, it is by the grace and the mercy of God. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Child of God, this is the message unto you. That that situation that has tarried for so long, that have stressed you out, God is going to end it for you. Hallelujah. Glory to Jesus. Now, let's quickly go to the book of 1 Peter. I want us to read the book of 1 Peter from chapter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, let's go from verse 6. Hallelujah. The Bible says, humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God. It says, humble yourself. So, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Can you see? So when you humble yourself before God, he will definitely exalt you. Like, okay, God, I don't know how you are going to give me this car. I've been asking for a car for many years. Well, even if you don't give me the car, I humble myself before you. I will still serve you. I wasn't serving you because of car. I serve you because of my soul, for my soul to be free. You understand? So when you humble yourself and you are serving God for whom he is, every other thing will follow. This is the person that this message is speaking to. Every other thing that needs to follow, as the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God, and every other thing will follow. Every other thing I about to follow, because God is putting an end to that suffering. The Bible says in verse 7, it says, casting your care upon him, for he careth for you, you know. When you cast your care upon the Lord, yes, when you humble yourself before God, you have needs, you have care. Every one of us does. There is no one who does not have needs, who does not have care. We have what we need. We have what we are asking the Lord for. Yes, we have what we are, we are waiting on the Lord for that have not manifested. Every believer is waiting on the Lord. Let it be the most mightiest man of God or woman of God that you know. Every believer is waiting on the Lord for one thing or the other. Some wait for the Lord for a long life. Some wait for the Lord for more anointing. Some wait for the Lord for finances to build their ministry. Some wait for the Lord for divine health. Some wait for the Lord for fruitfulness. Some wait for the Lord for members in their church. There are people everywhere. Some are waiting for connection. Every child of God is waiting on the Lord. You must understand that in this boat of waiting, you are not alone. But when it is your time in due season, God will not exalt you. He will not bring it to pass. So you must know when you are looking at the story of your life like, oh, you are the only one. No, remember that every child of God, every child of God, some are waiting on the Lord to take them to heaven. That is still waiting. There are so many believers who are old. They are like they are tired of this earth, but they can't kill themselves. They are like, God, I want to come to heaven. I have spent my life now. Oh, all my mates are gone. Oh, all my sisters are dead. All my brothers are dead. Oh, it's remembering or just me. God, I want to see you. And God is still keeping them here. They are still living. They still wake up. They are like, I am still alive today. I want to go to heaven. You know, there are people like that. They, go, they get to that age and they want to just see God. So you must have it at the back of your mind. That every one of us is waiting on the Lord. But according to the word of God in this first Peter, the book of first Peter, chapter 5, verse 6, it says, When you humble yourself, even in the midst of your waiting, under the mighty hand of God, he, may, he will exalt you, he may exalt you in due season. Even if he, the word may mean, even if he did not do it, stay humble and still serve the Lord. And keep casting your care upon him, for he careth for you. He said, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. The devil is roaring about. He's looking for whom to kill. He's looking for whom to devour. He's looking for whom to destroy. He says, he says just hold on to the Lord. Hold on to the Lord. Hallelujah. 
Glory to Jesus. Say, but the God of all grace, who had called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while, make you perfect, establish and strengthen and settle you. God is settling somebody. God is settling somebody. And God is establishing you and God is strengthening you. God is ending that suffering for you. It is well with you, Jesus. Love you. And I love you with the love of Christ. I remain your sister, Evangelist Sarah. By the grace of God, I will see you again. Bye-bye.